Welcome Capricorns, your in-depth monthly forecast for May 2024 for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now I'm showing the event chart, the energy that you bring into this month. We need to be mindful of the position of your ruler, Saturn, that continues in House 3 where he's been for a year. So that's really been pushing you to be mindful of your interactions on a daily basis but you also have the midpoint between the moon in Aquarius and the sun in Taurus in the sign of Pisces 2 house 3 so those everyday communications can be blessed this energy is the balance of the more receptive vibe of the moon and the more go-getting energies of the sun but it links brilliantly to Jupiter and Uranus in your personal fifth house. Fifth house energy is where you can really showcase your talent, your sparkle and of course we just had that glorious conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus on the 21st and they're still in touch this month for the first nine days but Venus the planet of charm but also of relating and money has returned back to Taurus and because it's a fellow earth sign like yours there's a mutual receptivity so that fifth house energy is really encouraging you to demonstrate this month your talents and flair but of course we have had a lot of energy in the fourth house how we feel our immediate world and environment and Mars the planet of thrust moved into that area as April came to a close now Pluto is going to be incredibly influential this month he was of course with you for all but 11 weeks until the 21st of January since 2008 he goes into a retrograde on the 2nd which takes him back into your sign on the 2nd of September through to the 20th of November but you can see Pluto is very close to the moon as this month starts so the moon in Aquarius can be more outspoken Pluto here in this combination could see you feeling uh, much more attached in terms of your emotions to your self-worth or your financial situation but both of them are squaring up to Venus and it's possible that this could give you a little bit of an urge to be more extravagant but also if there is someone that you're interested in romantically I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't at this stage if it's fairly new uh, resort to any grand gestures for sure you may want to spoil someone that you know much better but if there is someone who has had a tendency to lean on you for financial support as the moon moves forwards on the 1st of May it too squares up with the Sun along with Pluto square with Venus and that quarter moon provides a backdrop for the first week of the month so that second fifth house energy is interesting the fifth house can be where we could be more demonstrative affectionate particularly with Venus's help but it's also the sector of speculation and if you do fancy a flutter well perhaps that's something you'll decide to go for but I wouldn't be too free and easy with your resources early on in the month however having Venus in its home sign of Taurus is a really lovely thing and it is going to be moving forwards this month in a very influential way but Mars uh, a planet which rises in your sign so you have a, a real uh, feel for the value of Mars that's moved into your fourth house and you can see it's right down there at the bottom of your chart the nighttime part of your situation the great thing about Mars at the start of this month it's going to be in uh, Aries for six weeks which of course it rules is that it forges an amazing link with Pluto so Pluto for sure it's square with Venus can create situations where there may be some strings attached to a romantic or a financial situation but Pluto applying to to Mars is neat willpower and if there is something you want to reform in terms of your home that hasn't quite got finished 
through the transition of the Sun and the total solar eclipse, Mars moving here gives you extra urgency. The problem is that Mars in the sign of Cancer, which is a kind of fourth house energy, can be very picky and a little bit defensive. So just watch that. But if you did want to keep going forwards with a do-it-yourself project or refitting a kitchen or painting and decorating, Mars, supported by Pluto, will give you lots of drive. Also, if you've ever thought of working from home or providing a service in your local community, that too could be something that would work well with this set of influences. Now, of course, Mercury spent much of April in a retrograde in your fourth house. So if you have been waiting for a tradesperson to turn up to finish a job, hopefully they did make it by the 25th when Mercury went direct but it doesn't come out of its post-retrograde shadow until the 13th. So there may still be something that's lagging that Mars can bring that extra sense of dynamism to, to move it forwards. But it is true that Mercury is very close to the North Node. And when it comes to your emotional world, just being really in touch with your senses, your, uh, your more psychic antenna, if you like, could really be very, very helpful. Mercury in the fourth house has a tendency to see us circulate worries in our minds, but find it more difficult to share them with other people. But Mercury will be moving forwards on the 15th into your fifth house. That's very positive in itself, although it will clash with Pluto. So Pluto is starting to weave into this month in such an important way, and that Retrograde on the 2nd is still involved in the square with Venus through to the 3rd and it's still in an amazing link with Mars through the first week and we have that quarter moon for week 1 too. But Jupiter and Uranus are in touch within 3 degrees through to the 9th but on the 8th we have a very influential new moon. New moons are a great opportunity to set our intentions. I feel since Uranus has been in your fifth house four times since March 2019 that your uh, qualities in terms of artistry and flair and being a bit edgy, something you're not so much known for, have actually been given a platform to thrive. But have you always felt comfortable seizing that? If that more conservative side of your nature has held the upper hand, Uranus is linked with Jupiter is a very encouraging one and now Venus and the Sun are supporting them and then with the new moon as well if you really have got something that helps you to shine and demonstrate your charisma this can be an amazing month ahead and part of the reason for that is that Saturn your ruler links in and anchors that new moon in an absolutely perfect way so it's almost exact as well so Saturn comes back to you after perhaps being a little bit challenging over the last year. You may have at times doubted some of the ideas you've had or maybe there have been tensions with neighbours or you found uh, the world of tech quite frustrating at times, which wouldn't be a surprise. It can be very frustrating. But certainly those quick, short conversations, the third house uh, is influencing, Saturn may have brought a little bit more of a blunt instrument at times. So the fact that Saturn now is very supportive around some of the things that you want to do that show your flair or are to do with fun. So if you met someone over the next month romantically that you really liked and it felt that they were a solid citizen, someone that you could respect with, you know, some values rooted in the type of uh, good manners and reliability that you can appreciate, then this could be something that, you know, hangs around and gains roots with Saturn's help. But that brings us to the 13th. Mercury comes out of that post-retrograde shadow. You should get total clarity then. On the 15th, moves into a much more outgoing and bubbly area. You could find your sense of humour sparks back into life because Mercury's been in the sign of Aries for nine weeks and nine weeks in the fourth house that ain't easy so moving into the fifth is definitely a time to celebrate feeling a bit more playful but it is 
uh, it is in a tight right angle with Pluto. Not the best of days to have a discussion if you've got a different value system to a friend, a partner. It could be that it ends up being a little bit uh, of, a, of, of, a, of a test of wills. Um, however, what we have developing in week three is one of the most beautiful planetary aspects and alignment you can possibly have. And it is the conjunction between Venus and Jupiter. The reason it's so unusual is that obviously Jupiter visits each sign around about for each year. It's had a very odd orbit in recent years. So if we just think it's roughly 12 years since it last made its way through the sign of Taurus, but Venus the ruler linking with Jupiter, the two planets of fortune, inching closer together as the month goes on, but that is intersected by the Sun's move into the sign of Gemini. Gemini is a quick-witted, sometimes very witty zodiac sign. It's great for gathering lots of snippets of information. If you are someone who has a good connection to your community, and the fact it's in the sixth house, you could be someone who may help someone who perhaps needs some support, getting some shopping. Uh, those little thoughtful gestures that can often be hugely appreciated by neighbours. The sixth house is also where you want to uh, not only perhaps help others, but look to create a little bit more virtue in your life because it's a kind of uh, Virgoan influence, but through the framework of bright and bubbly interaction. Gemini and of course it's an air sign so if you find yourself talking about different approaches to your domestic situation you may even find yourself really honestly talking about different domestic appliances over the next month particularly if someone's uh, found something that really does does the job in a very efficient but cost-effective way that could be the type of thing that really piques your interest but seriously what we've then got on the 23rd, as we have the full moon in Sagittarius, is a series of very complex but very influential changes. Because Venus is right at the end of Taurus by the time the full moon occurs, and then later on, on the 23rd, moves into Gemini, joining up with the Sun, followed by Jupiter on the 26th. But they're all linking back to Pluto in your second house. If you are looking for a new role in terms of employment, your attention to detail, your reliability, your thoroughness, the fact that you can provide uh, information of what you've achieved in a way that people can relate to can all be very compelling and you could have a real stroke of fortune as this month draws to a close but equally the fortune could be in some kind of uh, 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 social or interactive way where you just find being with a particular person or group of people a great deal of fun and I feel that because the fourth house energy, particularly with the total solar eclipse, Chiron in the mix, Mercury retrograde, and the fact that also, and Saturn, your ruler, also in that conjunction with Mars, was slowing everything down and everything felt very hypersensitive. So you have an opportunity to embrace a much brighter, much more flamboyant and warm and affectionate vibe but then it all shifts and gets very practical towards the end of this month. But practical in a way that if you do find yourself uh, getting a new position or adapting your life in some way, you can do it in a way that turns out to be enjoyable. You know, that by linking with people who can share pieces of information, all these kind of things can help to inform your uh, end point of this month. But good fortune definitely is a possibility Capricorn so I feel that although the month could start off with a little bit of a challenge around resources and how you use them it can end certainly on a high it's been a real pleasure being with you Capricorn I hope you have a great May just to say 55% of people who watch this channel are not subscribers if you are one of them I'd be grateful if you could give this channel support. Please click on that sub button and 
Also click or tap on the bell notification and every time I drop a video you should get an alert. Thank you and all the best.